All right, this is uh, Hidden Kingdoms episode three. Um, we have a brand new player. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, Nate. Who are you playing? I'm going to play a uh, paladin named Ignatius Bente. Okay. And yeah, I uh, don't even know what deity. Deity. Well, okay. we can figure out as you go along, or you can just do one of those uh, de uh, deity less paladins who just focus on their oath rather than the uh, having any god to follow. You can take an oath without having a god. Oh, even in uh, 2e? I, I didn't know I that. I think in 2e, not in Fender 1. I think. I can double check. Yeah. I thought you could. Right, I've uh, been DM DMing a game for a couple of weeks, and uh, so I'm, I'm still kind of getting introduced to it. But I've got something I'm, of a grasp. We're, we're, we're all getting new to it. We're all getting used to um, it. Honestly. If you do me a favor, Nave, uh, can you change your um, Discord name so it's for the server? It is your character's name, and then your whatever you want to be called in parentheses. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do the same thing. A couple reasons why. It yeah. always puts me in streamer mode, so it helps me avoid the truncated user name. And additionally to that, it helps me remember what the fuck your character name is. Oh, Ooh. man. That's going to be a mouthful. <laughs> I'm going to just start calling you Igni. <laughs> uh, you, can, you can call me Nat for short. All right. Um... Okay. What the fuck were we? Um, now, would you like to come in as in you were with the party the entire time? Or... Oh, this I thought this was a session zero, so the party's kind of in a oh, mid campaign. Yeah. All right, yeah. So we, we uh, had like one session, so like yeah. we're not you, you haven't really missed that much. Yeah, like it's like one point two sessions basically. Yeah. There was like an hour in the first session, so and then the full. Mo session. Mostly, it's ex been exploration and getting to know the. Yeah, the field. reason I ask is if uh, I mean it's up to you if you would like just to be just to be introduced here. Um. Uh, yeah, sure. I could just like stumble in. Uh, okay. That I have no clue where I am, though. You, uh, uh, you just woke up. You are currently unconscious. You are currently unconscious. You now regained your consciousness. Um, last thing you remember is is seeing a really pissed off frost giant. Okay. Uh, and before that, you are here to um take up a call to up uh, to arms to uh start a new kingdom. I believe. And explore right. the stolen lands. Yep. Explore the stolen lands. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, how do I make a token or get a token? You already have one. Fantastic. Oh, I see. That's me. Yeah. How do I? Oh, I'm. I'm un I'm down because I'm unconscious. Oh, that's yeah. cool. If you want yeah, your uh, look more like you, you got you can um uh get a digital copy of a Hero Forge character, and you can right, import sweet. it into this. I plan on doing that uh probably by next session. Let's see. Oh, do you need to summon to the board? There you are. Sorry, Sebastian. All right. Okay. Um... Okay, so uh, he wants to do the recap from last session. Talon. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, we basically just recapped. Uh, mostly we explored things, killed a few bandits, uh, found a bandit that is um, tech, uh, functionally immortal. So we uh, cut off his arms and legs and C-3PO'd him. <laughs> yes. 
Bellator wearing him as a backpack. Yep. And uh, we ran into the frost giant, the pissed off frost giant, and basically convinced him to stop being a bandit and join us once we have a kingdom. And uh, uh, important detail is that uh, in the night, basically, this castle was attacked by these bandits. Um, and we don't really know why. To get the money, of course. Oh, well, yeah, to get the money, probably. But uh, there seems to be an ulterior motive as well. Whose castle are we in? Some random ass nobles that I've uh, uh, forgotten the name of. Jamandi, Jamandi, J- J- Lady Jamandi, Sword Lord. Um... Yeah, and her kingdom is uh, sponsoring our potential king making in uh, the Stolen Lands. All right, so she's our employer. Basically, yep. All right, well, that's good motivation to defend the castle. Yeah. <laughs> Less employer and more she's the one that's throwing us to the wolves because yeah, we that, have yeah. no backing other than, than them giving us the writ of permission. Uh, they are going to be... Uh, I think they are going to be giving us supply lines once we set up Correct. Uh, as well. So it's not just that. Well, but, yeah, but I mean... That's and and, beca- and by having rest of a nearby neighbor... Um, and the thing about the Stolen Lands is people have tried to settle them before and it's always ended up banging them in the dick. Um, so it's basically on, it's basically completely unsettled and unclaimed. Um, so by having, having this person, uh, and this powerful person who is influential in Restov, through the Restov government, essentially, uh, recognizing your kingdom, it gives it a lot more legitimacy than it otherwise would have. So this person is definitely someone that you do not want to piss off. More than so, we already have by just being ourselves. <laughs> all right. So I think that, I think that's all you, you, the information you needed to catch up, though. I don't think that's anything else. Um, I have a question about gear. Are we doing a standard Pathfinder start, 15 gold, buy from there? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> so um, in the middle of the corpses, a head pops up, looking relatively confused. Um... A little, little, little bit bloody, but otherwise fine. Um, well, you, while the uh, frost giant leans back and sits, he sits against the wall again, kind of nursing his uh, his wounds. Um, want to describe your character, Ignatius? Yeah, so I am a tall human man, thick-shouldered, barrel-chested. I've got a dark, curly beard and uh, olive complexion. I've got some considerable facial scarring and uh, very large, very white teeth. And uh, I am wearing a breastplate, and I have a large pole arm lying next to me as I sit up and scratch the, uh, the scars under my eye kind of itch at them and I'm <clears throat> what the hell's going on here seems like you might have had a bad run-in with our friend here uh she, Aurelia points over to uh the frost giant Although, he eyes a big can... club but if you if you act nice I don't think he'll be he'll be a problem anymore for you it smells evil Uh, I think misguided is perhaps the better ter- term for it. But I'm with still the right, one the right, piece. Yep, and with the, the right guidance, perhaps uh, we can uh, bring him to the right side. And coin. And coin, of course. Regardless, what's your name? I am Ignatius Vente, but uh, everybody calls me Nat. Nat, pleasure to meet you. We, uh, uh, have recently banded together, and we're trying to see if we can find Jumanji. Or, or is that that's her name, right? Jumanji. No, Jim Jumandi. Jumandi. Um. Uh. I'm I'm Aurelia. Um. She says. Uh. She's um. Uh. A fairly fairly uh brusque monster hunter. Um. I have to come up with a more exact description of her looks still. But um, she's got a ro- she's got a ro- robotic clockwork arm is the most notable feature on her. Um. Yeah, 
So then I guess the other two can introduce themselves. Yep, I'm Strix. Strix. Really? Strix. Yeah. And Strix is a goblin. Yep. <laughs> Which one's Strix? The one with the gun? Yes. Yeah, for, for now. Makes sense. Well, I mean, gun, yeah. Yeah, um, you know those, uh, like the bonobo monkeys, almost the size of an ape, but with a tail? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That That's basically Strix, except for he's wearing a hat that is clearly meant for a donkey. <laughs> Wait, you're a tailed goblin? Yes. Badass. And, and who uh, are you? Sebastian? If he, he's muted at the moment. I, I believe he is currently in the form of a rat. Yes. Nibbler. Uh, so, looks like he can't talk at the moment. Ah. Aurelia, uh, I don't mean to uh, make comments, you know. It's uh, 4722, but you're uh, kind of looking a little pale, a little green there around the gills, you know. <laughs> that that's a zombie. Oh, well, oh, yeah. in that case, this one's me. <laughs> oh, that's Aurelia. That makes yeah. much more sense. Yeah. The the rat raised the zombie. Oh, oh, okay. I thought that the rat person was in armor, and that's why I couldn't see they were rat. But yeah. it is a literal, a literal <laughs> rat. A literal rat. Yes. Okay. And, uh... Nibbler. Yeah. He's he yeah. squeaks in return. We'll break it down. He has a magic hat that allows him to go from humanoid form to actual rat form. But his humanoid form is still a giant rat. Well, it rat, takes rat, all rat. sorts to build a kingdom. Exactly. Uh, meanwhile, a bandit with a with a sock in his mouth is going. I forget who is he on Aurelia's back. I forget. I think I think he is. No, he was. I think you're the only one that could carry him yeah, at the moment. He... Oh, he's currently gesturing him. with all of his all of his cut off appendages. Oh, don't mind him. He's he, he's a he was a lawbreaker, but he seems to be immortal, so we're taking him prisoner. <laughs> Human shield. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, we should pro best be off. Uh, qu quickly, we should search at, uh, the rooms behind us, make sure there's uh, uh, nothing of value that we might need for the uh, trip ahead, and then we should pro keep keep going to see if we can find uh, Jaldori? Yeah. Yeah. So, All right, cool. We go look and explore these back rooms that we pa passed by earlier. All right. Because there's like a set, there's a couple rooms back here. That yeah, there's more. there's a few. Yeah. Um. All right, so the room we just went through was the pantry, and that's where you found like people that were, um, yeah, hiding out. That's where you people. That's where you find people that were, that were, sorry, tied up and now unconscious before they, you know, fucked off and said, you know what, we already fought that guy once. All right, so the room you want to enter. Uh, Mr. Fucking Impatient Mute Guy, uh, is a storage room. This storage room holds necessary items for running the estate, including extra oil lamps, bed lemons, candles, common tools, and crates of miscellaneous supplies. Hmm, nothing useful for defending a, an attack, I think. Would anyone like to roll a perception check? Oh, yes, I would. Yes. Take a look in here. Oh, we got a 12 plus 15. 13. 
19. Um, Strix, you notice something a little unusual. Um, at between the between the two sets of large crates against the wall, um, there is a small red post-it note. Okay, what's it say? It says, stop leaving the door open. Okay, I'm going to close the door. <laughs> Nothing happens. The post-it note was found between the two boxes, by the way. Like, against, like, a what appears to be a bare wall. Oh. He has an intelligence of plus two, but he's a little slow on the uptake. Two's not too bad. Oh, what are um, you saying? Like, oh, oh, the spider. The rat the spider. is currently yeah. squeaking wildly while pointing at the pointing at the wall. Right. Well, it comes back right. in and so take, takes another look at the wall and says, "Is there something about the wall?" She like. I feels her hands against it. The rat is like pointing aggressively as if trying to move it. Push the wall. Oh, really? It pushes the wall. It relents. Oh. Um. All right. Hold on. One second. The small windowless room contains a large wooden trunk secured with a formidable looking padlock with intricate okay. keyholes. Can I open it up? I can talk Do to you. Do you have a lockpick? I, I have a tail. Uh, I think our uh, goblin friend has a way to open it. I do not have a thieves, ki uh, thieves tools yet. I do have the ability to use them, though. Remember uh, the key we have you got? I can improvise. Oh, oh we got I do oh, have a right. key. I will insert. I will slot the key. Um, all three keys seem to separate as you put it in the lock and head in a different section of the mechanism, and then spin on their own, unleash, unlocking the lid. The padlock snaps off with a huff. And what is inside? It's a mimic. <laughs> <laughs> What's a password? These? No. I was... Uh, okay. I, I'm going to take out... You're not Jumanji. Jumanji. Oh, you're actually making it a mimic? Oh my god. It is! No, it requires a password. Oh... I, I'm going to pull the sock out of the bandit's mouth. You told us the password was cheese. The chest opens. Oh. Um. Inside? inside the slightly pulsating chest, you find numerous items. There are eight small cloth bags, each holding 100 gold pieces. Two lesser healing potions, a plus one mace, and a plus one longsword. There is also a small leather-bound journal. Oh, wow, that's quite a lot of things. Uh, can we have that posted in chat by chance? Would, gotcha. Uh, yep. that up. Our new paladin friend might uh, want the longsword, actually. Uh, what what weapons are you... Or the mace. Uh, what weapons is... Uh, you said he was using a, a halberd or something? Yeah, I have a, a glaive. I have a halberd or a glaive. I don't remember what the hell I have. Alarm. More importantly, I the where head exactly are, is the paladin on the whole not robbing your benefactor spectrum? Well, I do worship a lawful good uh, god, I, I think. But, you know, I can change. <laughs> we, we can fix I it. Could, I can be evil for and There you. are lawful opportunist gods. <laughs> yeah. Also, we are using these tools to better defend the castle, obviously. Uh, you sure? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I, these will directly benefit us in uh, helping out. I mm have -hmm. an intelligence modifier of zero and a desire to, to do the right thing, so 
You tell me it's right. I'm there for it. <laughs> um, so plus one base, plus one longsword, small leather. What's the what's the, what does it say in the leather bound journal? It is a list of all the servants of the of the manor and guards, along with the dates in which they receive their monthly pay. This is the pay chest. Well, we could probably just not take the gold. I'm thinking we just take the weapons, or maybe, maybe the and the healing potions. I think a certain rat is probably going to bitch about that, but you know, you do you. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think? I'm fine with that, actually. Um, I don't actually want anything out of the chest, but I will take a couple of the pints of oil out of the crates in the storage room. Sounds good. You have acquired think two if pints we're defending, of oil. If we're defending this castle, she would probably want us to have the health potions. That's what I'm thinking. Make sure we leave the pay for uh, everyone else. Um. All right. Let's look at. Uh, you know, I'm surprised you bothered to look at the journal. I'm not gonna lie. What What do you mean? We always look at the journal. Yeah. Um. Based on some of the notes, you understand that this is the secondary treasury. Interesting. Okay. So that means there's another treasury somewhere. But regardless, we need. We're mostly here for the weapons right now. Uh. So I need to find plus one longsword. How does plus one work in this game? Uh, uh, similar, oh. I believe. Okay. If we're taking the the things, I'll take the plus one mace if nobody else has a use for it. Yeah, sounds you good. Go I right can, ahead. I'll take a long, I can take the longsword. All right, which room are you opening now? This modest-sized library lies in ruins. Bookshelves along the east and west walls have been emptied. Books lie heaped into a pile in the northeast corner. Set atop this heap are the severed arms, legs, and heads of a dozen guards and would-be heroes. A blood-spattered chair sits next to a shuttered window. I checked the bodies for loot. <laughs> Um, hold on one second. Oh, it's a potency ruin. That's how that works. Okay. Mm. Can you take pot can, can, uh, Does anyone know if you take ruins off weapons to put on your other weapon? Yeah. You can. It's a oh, core okay. game mechanic. Cool. I, I yep. that's that that's new news for me. So I can put it. So later, like I assume during a long rest or something, you could do that, or do, can you do it whenever? I don't know that because it hasn't come up yet. We're level one. <laughs> Sounds right. good. I'll, I won't worry about it till the long rest then. Because I'd, I'd rather put this on my bastard sword. But um, so there is currently an ogre in the okay. middle of the library. Oh boy. On top of this, um, behind him, he is currently scratching at his eyes that are beat red and it looks like it got cut up real bad there's currently a little um halfling crouched in terror silently behind him oh as you enter he looks up and says ah? where are you little one um I would say let's stab him, but what if he's the librarian? <laughs> uh, okay. He is currently itching himself, by the way. <laughs> he like, says, he's like where are you, little one? Strix, Strix going to talk up. I prefer vertically challenged, thank you. Uh, deck save. <laughs> I just don't want to be racist and assume the ogre's not the librarian. <laughs> he could be itchy because of book lice. I've seen this before. It does happen. <laughs> That's a 16. Um, let me roll damage. He throws a full arm. He throws a full arm at you and hits you. All right. Well, does that start combat then, or or can we just like walk up and stab him for throwing something at him? 
Wow, I rolled max damage. He does six damage. Ow. <laughs> it hits you right, hits you right with the elbow. He just hit uh, this rat that's now my friend. Goblin. Goblin. Oh, he's a goblin now. No, I've been a goblin the whole time. There's a goblin and a rat. There's two different ones. Yeah. The go Oh, you're further away. Uh, but you are within 15 feet of me. So I think I would uh, take some ranged reprisal. Okay, oh, everyone roll initiative. Sounds good. Uh... Uh, Nord, 23. Type it out in chat. No clue where that is in here because I'm not in Foundry. It's, it's but... perception plus uh, any other bonuses you might have. But it's usually just perception. Uh, oh, no. Except for me, I use stealth. So yeah. um, You could technically roll stealth if you were s in stealth, but he always gets to roll stealth, I think. Yeah, I have uh... to roll stealth to get some of my benefits, and even if I'm not in stealth, I'm using my stealth for initiative. Yeah. So uh, so normally it's just perception. Uh, then plus any bonus modifiers do you have specifically to initiative? 23. Nice. Wow, we're rolling no. real high today. I'm using physical dice, which is why I'm rolling so much better. <laughs> ah, weighted dice. Me too. I'm just kidding. Oh, no, they're not <laughs> weighted. I'm just using my dice tower. I, I, I'm i just... I'm just uh, ch 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 I know. Oh You're God, good. I'm choking on that word jesus christ yeah i, I all have right. i rolled we're all your guys as initiative rolls i put it in chat yeah, i'm waiting yeah, for the other ones general. uh jack needs to still put his in Win. there you go then cool and uh i don't know if sebastian he did not thought. sebastian What, sorry? What's your initiative, initiative, bud? Oh, uh, I didn't roll it. Uh, Please do so. Uh, Plus your perception. Yep. So, 19. Okay, hold on one second. So it's going to be Talon. Really, also, I have uh, another moment of uh, quiet. And then, where the fuck is your guy in Chalspire? Oh, there, he's on the fucking table. Okay. <laughs> Why is he on the fucking table? I got up on the he's table. He's the rat. I'm trying, I like to, being I'm, on trying the to, I'm trying to apply a turn order here. All right, there we go. Okay. All right, Strix, what do you do? I mean, he hit me with an elbow. I am going to shoot the asshole. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. Yeah. I have a feature that lets me uh, strike as a reaction. Do I get a reaction before combat, or... No, he most he basically initiated combat by throwing an elbow. Well, wouldn't that still trigger the reaction? Mm, no, I don't think so. Because the I think the idea is it, when an ally gets attacked, he gets a reaction to attack back. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't in combat yet. That's what I'm saying. Oh, that's fair. I see what you're saying. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, you would never have surprise, ever. Um, uh, that's a nat 20. <laughs> rage comes in small packages. Yes. <laughs> I rolled a 29. <laughs> All right. Roll damage. Uh, that's 17 points. <laughs> um, you notice that as you shoot him in the shoulder, he spins around. 
and there's a couple of arrows stuck in the small of his back. So this guy is already on his last legs. Good I am sure. going to have to re uh, spend my second action to reload. Um, how much damage was that? Uh, 17. Okay, got you. All right. What are you doing? What are you doing with your third action? Ah, uh, I'm gonna bank it. What? I'm not doing anything. Okay. I'm skipping. Oh, that's right. Because you don't have to spend it to. Uh, because if you shoot, you have to spend another one to reload, huh? Yep. Fair enough. All right. Next, Ignatus. All right. Uh, I'm gonna hit him with my glaive. Roll to hit. That's 10 plus 7 is 17. No, Seven. I'm sorry. That's a total of, that's a total of 10. Ooh. That's Ooh. a miss. You rolled a 10 to hit? I thought you said 17. I did. Well, it said total 10 at the bottom. And I added 7 to it, but then I realized it already added the 7. Ah, okay. Gotcha. I've you never used uh, this... I'm trying to import it into Foundry right now because I wasn't sure if we used a common Foundry page or where we're rolling dice. Here, hold on. And uh, I really don't like playing out of uh, Path Builder, so I'm going to set up in there, but it'll take Here, a few minutes. Here, uh, go ahead and click on that. That I, I don't know if you need the other one to get in, but that should let you in. Gotcha. Okay, uh, understood. Oh, well, there we go. All right, Aurelia. All righty. Let's go. Yeah, on. I need an invitation. I don't know how to do the invitation. That might have to be something Theo does. No, that's wool. Oh, oh crap! Okay. You're right. Uh, you can contact him. We can get it for next. He'll probably. He can get back to you by next session. Um. Yeah, I'll just build my character in my own game. Okay, so we're gonna go up uh, as one action, two action spell strike. Uh, so roll to hit. So you like? Oh, and, uh, you, by the way, you dive and slide across the table. Nice. All right, and we're gonna do um spell strike with um. Uh, where is it? Telekinetic projectile, to be specific. Okay. We got a... Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> At 11. Um, right. You do not hit. He's he's currently cr scratching himself so furiously, it took you out by surprise, and you just you missed his arm. Man, I am not hitting these. Hit. Alright, uh, that's my entire turn. All right, Mr. Nibbler. Okay. Uh, phase bolt with it being heightened. How are you heightening? It's level one. Oh. Wait, yeah. Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're still level one. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So just normal. Uh, does an 11 hit? No. No, it does not. Okay. <laughs> we're all rolling like 10 and 11. Jesus. I miss. <laughs> All right, and that's my turn. <laughs> okay, so go um, out there. I need you to make me a uh, strength saving throw, Aurelia. Strength saving throw. All right. As uh, he is going to attempt fortitude. to pick you up by your legs. Yeah, it's a fortitude save. Fortitude save. Fortitude save. Okay. Yeah, it's fortitude, reflex, and will are the three. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I rolled a sixteen. Um, you are now his weapon. Oh damn it! Sixteen doesn't ah. make it. That's crazy. Yes. Um, he was going to throw you at the only person that hit him, Strix. <laughs> yup. Um, Strix, <laughs> make me a reflex save. Yup. <laughs> As he, what he does is he grabs, like, really by, like, one leg and spins around and then just a full arm throw into you. That's a 13. <laughs> and it's good! Um, and as in, as in it's not good. That's, that's bad. Yeah, I, I get that. <laughs> um, that's going to be... 
Well, that's not that much damage. That's going to be six bludgeoning damage to you both. Both? Oh, boy. Yep. And you're not prone. And now I'd like to use Retributive Strike. Go for it. Uh, no, that's an 11 to hit. His his finan his his fancy uh his fancy like spinning maneuvers have driven you like you know distracted. I don't know. I don't know a good. I don't know a good way to say how you miss with the glaive at that range, but you know, it's kind of tight in here, you know. And I haven't warmed up. I was just knocked out. I no, that's true. That's true. You, you bumped guys. it against the library stack. A lot of ogres. Big old killer. Um. The female halfling takes a swing at his ankles and misses with a fucking five. With her bonuses is a five. Roll she rolled a two. Yikes. Alright. Strix. Yee. Yeah. What are you doing, bud? Does a seventeen hit? <laughs> I assume you stand up, and I assume you shoot at him. Oh, I don't even have to stand up to fire. That's the nice thing about having a gun. Okay, so he, uh, a 17 does in fact hit. Yep, and that's a uh, D10 plus... Uh, hold on one second. This thing freaking glitched out on me. I, I love when it does that. Uh, yeah, that's two point. I don't know. Wait, is that even the right? Yeah, no, that's wrong. I, anyway, it's a D6, so that's two points of damage. Um, You can't quite get, you can't quite hit him, but you do manage to clip the back of his leg. Yep, I'm going to stand up, reload, and you know what? Fuck it, I'm firing again. Roll it. There we go. 28 to hit. That is a crit. Good shit. Oh, that that's a critical. I'll hit that then. So, uh, as a reminder, uh, you roll once and you double all the damage total, including the yeah. bonuses. Yeah. Um. So, it when I crit on the musket, it actually bumps it from a d6 to a d10. Nice. And doubles. Because it has the explosive trait. Mm, okay. So that's 13 points of damage. <laughs> uh, You managed to just dead-eye and just blow his fucking head off. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, this flintlock musket rifle has the fatal critical feature to it. When you hit a critical, it increases the dice pull from a d6 to a d10. Nice. Okay. So, stand up. Uh, brush myself off, and uh, I'm going to drink one of those health potions we just looted. Yep, and as a reminder, um, we're using the homebrew thing where you can spend an additional action to get the full healing benefit from the health potion on combat, and if you spend the time, which is really just like an extra 30 seconds outside of combat, um, to make sure you get all of the good bits out of the potion, you get the full healing amount. So in this case, it's 8. So I'm back to 12 HP. Um, I picked up both health potions. If someone wants one of those, though, I can I, I am at 2 hit points. <laughs> Here, Here's the other one. Thank you. Uh, and, and it's max eight? Yeah, max eight. Yeah, I, I will take the entire time to drink the thing. Yep. All right. And we should probably say hello to uh, this halfling over here. Yep. Um, she jumps up and down, and she, and she starts cheering. Woohoo! Um, she's going to look at the uh, the goblin who's all beat to hell. 
and she's going to come up, and she's going to tap your shoulder. You feel better. Ah, thank you. You have regained, wow, my world maximum, eight hit points. Woohoo. Well, I'm full up at 14 now. <laughs> nice. Ah, thank you. Ah, thanks for the save. Yeah, no problem. We got to yeah. stick together. And who might who might you be? Um, I'm what people call Lindsay. She strums a Spanish guitar. Oh. Uh, Bard, perhaps? No, why you ask? I'm kidding. No yes, she's a Bard. <laughs> <laughs> um, she says... Could you, are you, you want to join us? To try to. We're trying to save, save. Uh, well, we're trying to do what we can to save the castle. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of rats. <laughs> He's actually pretty nice. You have, you named your rat? No, he named himself. The rat named itself. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm assuming his parents named him, but yeah. This makes me rethink of everything I knew about rats. I, I, I mean, his name's Nibbler. She's going to sit down and start uh, contemplating her life. I, I'm oh. like, Nibbler, can I pull your She's, hat Her off? head snaps up. What? Oh, yeah, pull off my hat. Might be smart. Yep, I will yank his hat off yet. Hello. Oh my god. It's a rat person. Rat folk. Don't discriminate. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I suppose. So I'm you... not... So I wasn't you... here for like the last four minutes but I was saying goodbye, so I don't know what happened. Uh, we so killed we, an ogre, and uh, this we saved this halfling. Yeah, yeah, I was there for killing the ogre. I just don't remember the halfling conversation. Uh, she also it hasn't really had that much of a conversation. She also healed Strax oh. a little bit. Yep, and oh, she wow. she was a little concerned about the rat. I see. Which, which is where we came up with me taking the hat off of you. Okay. Well, all right. I'll say I'm not that dangerous, and then I would like to go back to gagging the bandit. Because we ungagged them and we never regagged them. Uh, she plays a quick jig, and you all have been inspired. Oh, what does that do in this game? Um, the next aid check you attempt, you roll a performance higher than your next grade. <laughs> the next aid check. Yep. Okay. Nice. When you let you use the aid action, aid reaction, you can roll performance instead of normal skill check. And if you roll a failure, you get a success instead. Oh. So, you, so you're basically almost guaranteed a success unless you don't crit fail. Yeah, if you're a legendary performance, you gain you automatically critically succeed. Nice. And aid just gives people a bonus to succeed. It doesn't guarantee. No, wait, that's inspire competence. That's not right. Oh. Yeah, no, that's it should work the same as 5e, but just a little different. Oh, I've... no, it's even better. Um, you inspire your allies with runes or tones of encouragement. You and all allies in the area gain a plus one status to attack rolls, damage rolls, and stays against fear effects. Hmm. Oh, that, nice. that is nice. That's inspire courage, huh? Yes, it is. Yeah. Hold on. What, what the fuck is it talking about in the book? Because, uh, I know in Pathfinder 1, I don't know. Oh, it is Inspire Courage. Okay, I'm not retarded. Uh, yep. There, there is no traditional bardic inspiration in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. It has been replaced with Inspire Courage. Ah. She is constantly playing a song. Okay. A la Braves of Robin. <laughs> <laughs> but it just well, lasts six seconds. Well, if she follows us around, though, then we're good. Yeah. We're good to go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, now that we are inspired, uh, can we go check out the other rooms? Like, uh, this one over here. Um, Sebastian has to, uh, to go for a bit. 
but he will be. He might be able to be back later. I'll do. Okay. Yep. Um, I understand. If shit happens, it's fine. Um. Okay. Um. All right. So you're going into that room. I have the break wall one. We do not need to go into the room on the left. Uh, these are basically just like miscellaneous rooms. Um, these are washrooms. The next one over is like the cook and servants quarters. Uh, um, at least somebody finally thought to add a bathroom in a campaign. Good, good call. Um, all right, I'm gonna make a quick perception check since uh, there seems to always be a perception check, and I got an at twenty. Well, I didn't ask for it. Oh, do you have to ask for it? Because you sometimes you you say perception, and you're like, are you, do you guys want to? Well, if I ask, or? if I ask for, if I ask for a roll, yes, okay, I'll use it. it. But I didn't okay, ask for it. Got it, got it. Okay. Um, so, does this count then? Correct. Sorry, you don't get to bank in that twenty. Um, I'm just letting you guys know the rest of these rooms have to have are just like miscellaneous. They have like some some various bits and bobs. Um, there All is right. a pouch on a table inside one of the servants' quarters. Well, I think we're good to keep moving. Team, Question? yeah, I'm good. Let's go. All right. You have cleared this section of the uh, the tower, or the uh, not tower, the uh, the manor. What the fuck happened right there? Right where? What? Looks like a bugged out and it moved you way the hell over there. My bad. Oh. <laughs> All right, so we got this door on our left and the door straight ahead, right? Yep. Uh, do we know where uh, uh, Jadori? Jadori? I'm already forgetting her name. I don't know why I cannot remember this. Jumandi. Jumandi. Um, uh, Jumandi. Jumandi would be. Do we have any idea what nope. direction we should go? Okay. What is her uh, position? What's her rank or She's title? Like Sword, Lord. Sword Lord. Sword Lord, yeah. Sword Lord Jumandi. Okay. I like that sword lord. Yeah, she's uh she's very high ranking. So are we like moving quickly somewhere or are we just kind of going along doing perception checks and looking around? Uh, uh more around smoke has filled this area. Obviously, the manor is on fire. Which area? This area, everywhere. Like, black everywhere. smoke is beginning to fill the manor. Okay. Well, I think we need to figure out how to get um, to the main defense force, wherever that might be. Yeah. I think outside at this point. That <clears throat> would be a good point. Or finding the fire to put it out would also be a good thing to do. Uh, um, this wide hallway is filled with billowing smoke. Further ahead, on either side of the hall, several open doors are illuminated by flickering flames. We might be going the wrong way, but further in? Yeah. We could try it. The rooms on the left are all miscellaneous, um, are all miscellaneous guest rooms completely ablaze. Do we remember where we came in from? The other side of the hall. No, I mean into the castle. Yeah, well, we into the in manor the... from was in the beginning from the feast hall. And that was the feast hall where I just was, where I woke up? Correct. Yeah. So the front door is that huge door. Okay. Yep. So I think we probably want to push in since uh, we haven't seen any guards here, minus the ones that were... Were in the murdered brutally, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, Jamandi might be in danger. Yep. <laughs> Man, she's just relegated to being called a fucking uh, 90s movie 90s movie board game, isn't she? Pretty no, much, no, yeah. I said Jamandi with a D. Oh, okay, okay, it's, okay, it... sorry. I heard Jamandi, my bad. I'm the one that said that. Yeah, well, okay. you'll never not hear it again now that now that it's out there. Jimandi. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's go through this door. Um the the smoke continues to to increase in intensity. Um throughout these I will say throughout these uh these doors, um you can see bodies being burned up and the w walls are on fire. Um there's also closed windows. We should probably smash those windows to get more air in here. No, 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 no. Do not do that. <laughs> do not do that. I know booms. Do not do that. Yeah, but it's, the smoke's <coughs> it's really thick. You're sure? Lay down. And, yeah, Strix is going to hit, open the uh, hit prone and put his hand on the door. Is the door hot? The door is hot. Okay, okay. Um, This is going to be dumb. You hear someone yelling inside the room. It sounds like Tartuccio. I'm going through the door. Kick it. But let us back off first. This is going to be bad. Um, It'll be fine. Turn to, turn to Aurelia. Do you have, like, water or a water spell? Uh, No, I'm not. I only know a couple of spells, and none of them are helpful in this situation, I think. <laughs> um... The small halfling proffers up a uh, small, special blue bottle. She hands it to what? the goblin. I, I look at it. Does it have a label? It does have a label. On the top, it, it says property of Jamandi Aldemil. That's not She's, uh, the the the, uh, the halfling smiles. What There's screaming on the other side of the door. I'm going through it. Yeah, I really... Step out of the way. This is gonna hurt. Aurelio steps out of the way. Does the door move when I when I kick it? Um before right before you do this, Strix, roll me a Arcana. Hmm. Yep. Give me a half a sec. This is always slow. I I love the multiple menus to roll something. Seventeen. It's called a potion of the river. Ah, okay. Be very handy. That that will be very handy. All right, go ahead, kick the door, prepare for the back draft. Already kicking. Fortitude save. Okay, saves. DC of fourteen. Fortitude. Roll. Nine. All right, you kick the door open, and for a moment you look like a glorious bastard. Then the air comes in and blows you off your feet. All right. You take two bludgeoning damage. There are multiple screams as apparently some group of uh, some goblin bandits are eviscerated. Nice. So, hey, are you still conscious? Yeah, I'm fine. I was just hey, resting. I, before you get up, Strix is going to walk over to your... to stand over top of your head, look down. I know booms. That's called a boom draft. When that happens, it's better to actually make a small hole in the door than to kick it open fast. Yeah, but and then there were people going to open screaming. Up the bottle of the river. <laughs> uh, is the door open? The door is open. The door is no longer there after that. More or less correct. The door is in multiple through. splintered pieces. Um, Where are people? Who's screaming? Uh, there are four dead uh, goblin bandits that appear to be with the same group. And there are also, it appears to be Tartuccio, who appears to be dead. Dead? Oh, interesting. Who was Tartuccio? Would everyone yeah. like to roll me a perception check? Tartuccio is yeah. basically a uh, gnome who was at the feast, and um, you remember him as being someone who talked who talked shit about who, about uh, 
someone people at the table people at a certain table that you've now come to be familiar with they were, they were talking shit about us yeah they were talking shit about us 14 <laughs> 15 9 uh ignatius uh you've seen dead bodies before you squint a little bit and you notice that like one of one of Tartushu's eyes is slightly open. He's not dead. He's only mostly dead. I'm gonna grab him and haul him out. Oh, thank you, my savior. He rolls. I'm just a running nine through the front door. Uh I guess if he's performing, should I sense motive? Uh, he is. He obviously was f pretending to be un to be dead from his uh, his very poor performance. He was obviously pretending to be dead. It's like what the hell are you doing? Are you trying to die? Out. No, I was uh, I was hiding from the bandits. Where's Jamandi? Oh, she's uh, further in the west wing, I think. Which way is west? He points in the direction you're facing. Let's go. We're getting her out of here. Yeah. Uh, good luck with that. I'm going to go out the other way. I assume you cleared all the bad guys? Uh, just tell tell the giant you're cool, and he'll let you pass. The giant. Okay, we will do. Uh, he nice he job. picks up a sack from a corner of the room that's filled with glittering bobs and says, "All right, guys, I'll see you later." Hold up. <laughs> what? Were you? It looks like you might might have been a. Uh, no, nah, no, nah, I, I assure you, I came in with this. I did not see you with it at any point in the night. Are you sure? I mean, it, it's it's definitely mine. He says with his uh, thirteen performance, sense motive. Sense motive. All right. What is my sense motive? Uh, oh, is sense motive just perception? I forget. Always forget this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's like an action. Seven. Uh, fifteen. Oh yeah, the he he has definitely been looting. Uh, there's some priceless artwork in there. Drop the sack and you can go. I'll give you half. No. <sighs> he was lying. People do that. Son of a. I, I am placing my hand on this door. I, is it hot? <laughs> it's slightly warm. Okay. Now. Is uh, is there it, screaming on the other side? There is no screaming on the other side. I don't care then. Yeah. So, Igni, here's what you do, right? Take that. <laughs> big old poleaxe you got and chop the door. Um, Sounds before like they plan. do that, does he drop the bag? He though? drops the bag. Alright, and then he leaves? I really would let him leave if he doesn't. Yes. Okay. Aurelia's gonna pick up the bag with full intention to just give it to Jamon. Uh, Jamondi? Jamon. Um, Nibbler takes the bag. He's offering to carry it. Okay. Before I smash this door down, is it unlocked? It is. I am going to pull it open or push it open. Yep. Backdraft, remember? There is a fire. So? I don't follow. Do you want to get oh. knocked on your ass again? I back up and I poke at it with my pole axe. Just like a couple of quick little jabs. Um, bunch of air washes through. And then the door seems to be settled. Now you can open it. Hey, thanks. It's like when you've got a keg that's over full. If you don't let some of it out, boom. Very wise. All right. Um... Let's see. Oh, is this an armory? Yep. The slightly smoky room contains wooden racks holding various weapons and wooden stands designed to hold suits of armor. Many of the weapon racks and armor stands are empty, and several weapons discarded armor pieces lie about the floor. Uh, do any of them look magical? 
No, but they all look very finely made. Um, as in standard, uh... as in well crafted standard issue. Uh, there are eleven daggers, five long swords, ten spears, two glaives, one halberd, two battle axes, six crossbows, and a barrel containing a bunch of bolts and three suits of half plate armor, ten suits of chainmail armor, three chain shirts, and five steel shields. Oh shoot, half plate armor. Yep. Okay. Uh, I will equip a half plate armor. It I... takes a full minute. I think that. Oh. Hmm. Um, that time is actually reduced to a minute, uh, because the halfling very graciously assists you in getting your armor on. Okay, that sounds doable. I'll do yep. that. I, I will, I'll, I'll uh... just grab my old armor, my old chainmail. By the way, she is still playing a, uh, a song to encourage your, uh, to inspire your courage. Very cool. Thank you. Um, a anything that looks broken, I'm going to take and stuff in my backpack, because I can always melt that shit down into ammunition. Sorry, um, I was reading something. I apologize. You're gonna do what? If anything looks broken or is small enough, like the daggers, I'm going to take because I have the ammo crafter feet. I can just melt it down and turn it into shot for my gun. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean there are daggers you can take. There appears to be like one full plate of arm, full full plate that was like brutally uh, like torn asunder. It's mostly scrap metal. Yep, that, that I will absolutely take that. That will make me... The only thing I can't resupply here is gunpowder. <laughs> and that's because I just don't have the materials for it. Nice. Or if you could fix that plate armor, that'd be very sweet. For oh, you. I can absolutely fix it. Very sweet. I is will a, just need the materials to do is so. Is our uh, champion going to be uh, taking a plate, half plate or no? Oh man, yeah. Yeah? Hell yeah. All right, so I left my chainmail as a replacement. Yep. Hey man, um, upgrades, baby, upgrades. 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 But yeah, any scrap metal or um, even if it's rusty, keep it and grab it. I can do things with rust and just discarded metals. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, and I think we're going up to the next room, right? You. Oh boy. There's a there's frogs. Or oh, a frog. I I see an owlbear, a frog, a bear, and a stag. This might be a trophy room, if oh, not. Yes. Oh yeah, that makes more sense. It is in fact a trophy room. Um This large hall room has several polished white tiles. Hanging from the walls are various trophy heads. A stag with an impressive set of antlers, a large chest boar, and a cranking looking oversized owl, a snarly wolf, and two different reptilian monsters. Interesting. Alright. Um... However, uh, the statue of a toad blinks. I take the exploration activity, raise a shield. It's currently sweating. Approach. It was trying to hide, but it rolled a natural one and blinked. <laughs> I, I'm just going to, seeing it roll a uh, blink, I'm going to look it straight in the face, push my flintlock right up against its chin. Don't fuck with us. Just leave. Rabbit. Guardian. Yep. I don't care. Just leave. The place is on fire and we're here to save your mistress. Go away. He looks down and says, Friend? Yes, friend. Friend. Um, Because it looks down and sees the crest on your armor. It thinks oh. you are guards. <laughs> well, that's quite convenient. <laughs> you now have a large toad companion. Nice. Come on, our toad steed, let's go. Uh, he can in, he can in fact be ridden by a small creature. Strix is going to climb on his back. <laughs> Heck yeah! All right, roll performance to see how cool you look. Oh my god, I am going to look like absolute shit on this. Man, I hope we could take him on our adventure. That'd be sweet. 
Hey, the uh, the gnome said west, right? This is west. Yeah. That yeah. is a not one. It's fine. You get advantage because of the cool song. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's try this again. <laughs> Better. That's a five because I rolled. A well, your three. failure turns into a success because the song. So, yeah. Um, so you look it, moderately it looks... cool. Your 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 cloak slightly billows. It, it, it's cool for a goblin. <laughs> so, um, touch this door and see, just peer inside really quick. See if there's anything important in here. Um, this large room could table several padded chairs, a couple looking pair of couches, several side tables, and a finely crafted billiards table. Well, then we're just gonna keep going. Um, there are three men in black armor playing billiards. Is they this are, part of the building on fire? They are bandits. They are not, the building is not that part of the building is not on fire. We could, okay. I, we could just close the door and honestly, they're not hurting anybody. They're just playing pool actively. Yeah. Might be better to just not waste time. Than... <laughs> Go ahead. Well, you have you have the armor of the guards on. Uh, do you just like open the door? Do you just look at them and just like slowly shut the door? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Okay. Uh, roll like a um, intimidation. All right. Although I'm, I'm plus zero in this. Or the uh, face skill of your choice, I should say. Okay. 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 Yes, champion. You want me to roll intimidation? All right. Yep. <laughs> None of us have social skills. I have some, but yeah, I doubt I'm as good as the face, yeah. I can't intimidate because there's no active encounter. I will make an active encounter. Um, oh, I got bad news for you. Um, as you pop your head in, you notice something that 16. he missed. Um, Jathal, one of the people you talked to at the at the manor, is she's currently sprawled on one of the couches with her mouth with her mouth gagged and hands tied behind her back with rope. Oh fuck this! I'm going in. Oh, wait, who's sorry? Who's tied by? Has the big tied? the big guard Amazon woman? Oh, the person. Uh, Does oh, it no. matter? Yeah. Charge! And I'm gonna kick the frog. <laughs> I mean, I don't kink shame, so. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Where are these bandits? Where is this person? Uh, hold on one second. Oh my god, I'm lagging. There we go. Yeah, it does that every now and again since the new update. Yeah, it, it seems update. like it hasn't loaded all of the, um... Let me go ahead and change the atmosphere settings so you can actually fucking see. Not quite atmosphere, not quite as atmospheric, but much more practical. I kind of wish I could keep the giant frog as a mouth. I'm hoping you can. There's a, there's always a chance. We we can negotiate for it maybe. Um. By the way, um, I will say, given your previous previous role, um. I'm gonna have Nibbler roll a. Okay, you're pretty good. Um, it is essentially a statue, a construct given life. Oh. So it's like so it's like a frog statue that just wants to be a frog. Oh. It's a frog golem. Oh, that's so cute. A frog golem, if anything. Yeah, I hope, I hope we can keep him. Right? Okay, here is his stat block for you to run, uh, Strix. During this encounter. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Okay. 
All right, you know the magical words. Roll initiative. Not as good as last time. 17. 17. Roll initiative for your frog. Or, actually, your frog will just go after you. It's fine. Yeah, I, I'm still reading on that, so that'll take a minute. Yeah, I forget how mounts work also in Pathfinder. That's a, a thing. Oh, it's got a perception of plus seven. Nice. Okay, Boy. so it looks like it's going to... Uh, it looks like the turn order is bugging out. Um, initiative mode is... Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, it's going to be Ignatus, Strix, Aurelia. Sorry. Ignatus, Strix, the Frog, Aurelia, and the Bandits. I thought I had a shield because my token does, but I don't. I'm carrying a two-handed weapon, so disregard that shield action. Yeah. All good. Um, okay. So, uh, Ignis... How do you fucking pronounce your name again? Nat. Ign you just just Nat. 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 I'll just okay. change it to Nat. I am going to get up in the mix, and I'm going to hit this fucking guy with my halberd. Maybe a better so token a might be useful for you. Barbarian uh, token. Yeah, I'm actually thinking that real quick. That's a nine. So that's two actions. Third action. I am going to take another swing. What the hell? And... That is a 16 after my multi-attack penalty. Alright, let me see what his AC is. That hits. His AC is 16. Nice. For 5 points of damage. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's my turn. Excellent. Okay. Strix. All right. Uh I'm the ones on the in the back are ranged, correct? Um they all have like access to ranged weapons, but the one in front uh, is dual wielding daggers and it seems to be the one in charge. All right, well, he's being taken care of by the champion, so I'm going to shoot the one on the left. Okay, roll to hit. <laughs> That's a nat 20. Oh. Roll damage? Uh, 13. Points. Uh, reload. <laughs> Jake's really Second a role playing action. a sniper over here. Yes, that that is what he does. <laughs> and you know what? Screw it. Let's shoot him again. Well, is he dead or is he alive? I I don't know. How much damage did you do? He's Thirteen. Said he is dead as shit. Okay, yeah. Let's go for the second one then. I will take the map. Plus four. Uh, his head goes poof, and the other guy goes, wait, hold on, wait a, wait a minute. Where'd it go? That, that's an 18 to hit. You can talk about go. this as you hit. Uh, that is two points of damage. <laughs> and I'm going to, yeah, look down at the frog, because this is a quick action. Your name is Yoshi. Yoshi, use your tongue. 
<laughs> uh, Yoshi uses tongue grab. Um, so what he's going to do is it's a plus eight to hit. I'll roll. Yep. Oh my fucking god! And that's twenty. From going from constant misses uh, to all these nets. So, uh, the big boss gets grabbed by a tongue. Um. Uh, a creature hit by the giant frog's tongue becomes grabbed by the giant frog. The creature is not immobile, but it can't move beyond the reach of the frog's tongue. Creature can sever the tongue with a strike against AC-13 that deals at least two slashing damage. This deals no damage to the frog, but prevents it from using its tongue strike until it regoes its tongue, which takes a week. Okay. It's currently being dragged, kicking, and screaming right past the uh, the rare of influence of the uh, of the paladin. What do you do, bud? Do you have a, a attack of opportunity? I don't know if pal uh, champions do or not. I have range reprisal. No. Oh, okay. okay. I don't have attack of opportunity. It's a feat I can take, but I haven't. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Who's turned the frog looks at Strix. Do good? You did good. He looks down hungrily at the bandit. <laughs> Maybe. We gotta question a couple of them first, but Maybe when we're done. The one in the back who got hit for two damage says, I'll question. All right. So I well, guess we don't need this one. Uh, if it's really is third, we're going to go up and attack the one that's on the ground. I think I get a plus two circumstance bonus if they're prone, right? I yeah. believe yeah. so. Yeah, it would be like advantage in 5e, but... Yeah, I think it's just plus two in this. Okay. Um... Okay, let's see. We get the spell strike again. Uh, so it's going to be two actions. Uh, I got a, what is it, 15 plus. Where is my weapon? Uh, eight is 23. That definitely hits. Oh, 25, actually. It, it's, it, I'm just, just saying that for crit purposes. I'd assume that doesn't crit. Not quite. Dang. Okay. One more crit. Well, dang. All right. Well, actually, did you the... add your bonus from the song? The oh, I did not add my bonus from the song. Yep, that would be twenty six then. <laughs> yep, it crits. All righty, and spell strike crits are huge. All right. So we first roll the long sword that I picked up, and that is a total of six plus the spell strike, the spell part of the spell strike. So that's a d6. Four plus. What can you do? Seven plus six is 13. 26 damage. He is dead as shit. All right. Since he's dead, you can eat him, Froggy. <laughs> the frog does so. And uh, do the other bandit surrender? Uh, the other bandit takes a dash action to get the fuck out. In other words, he uses um, all of his available movement. To uh, all actions to run? Yes. He did have to use an action to open the door. All right. Well, I think we just let him go. Yeah, it's not worth it. All right. Uh, Aurelia goes and unties uh, our barbarian friend. Yep. Um. She says, "Thank you for uh for letting me go. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the return the great hall to." Kind of get my wits about me. Um, however, I, I assume you're looking for Jamandi? Yeah, do you know where she is? Yeah, uh, that boss said the Lady of the Manor has been cornered in the dueling pit by the boss and those two giants. 
there is currently a giant in the feasting hall. Uh, he has decided to give up on being a bandit, but he's still and strict the does the little handshake thing. Yeah, she's she's going to say, I don't have any magic to heal you, but I am quite good at medicine. Is anyone wounded? Uh, Aurelia is still wounded. Alright, she's going to um, to use medicine on you. Okay. Going to treat wounds? Yep. Since that takes ten minutes, I'm going to lay on hands myself. Nobody watch. <laughs> All right. Uh... Look at the rules for it. Uh, train DC. Okay, so yeah, I got it. Um, all right, so you're healed by two D eight. Two D eight. Nice. I don't need a ton of health. I just it doesn't. That help. is, you're healed by seven. Nice, but it's full then. Yep. Any wounded condition you have is also removed. Um, all right. By the way, she's not the barbarian lady. She's the, uh, because that's Miri. Oh, that's not her? Who is this? Do we know her? Yes. You, she, you did talk to her. Oh, okay. There was the hoity-toity lady, there was the sword lord, and then there was the Amazon barbarian lady uh she appears deathly pale and wears dark clothing her raven black hair is long and she has no jewelry oh, oh the vampire hoity-toity one gotcha yeah she has a very big sight she says uh we uh, i uh, really asks are you good in a fight could you help us uh deal with eldori i'm not sure you would want my company i mean i got no qualms with it Roll a, a everyone roll me a uh, religion check. We got a ten. DC a fifteen. Nineteen. She's undead. Twenty four. So, um, I mean, you're a little I, pale, but I, I don't see any problems here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I look at Ignat Ignatius. Uh, cover your ears for a minute. Yeah, no problem. Wait until he covers his ears and look at her. So, are you a zombie or a vampire? Or are you a revenant? I beg your pardon. Oh, I don't mind one way or the other. I just want to know so I know what capabilities you have. I merely take care of myself and my own. I don't... Well, I'm not allowed to aid others. Ah. Well, appreciate you pointing us the way, at least. Yeah, thank you. And if you ever do need help, like I said, I have no issue with what you are or anything like that. I've never really cared about the foibles of... Uh, the taller races, so I'm happy to help. I think she actually uh, roll a persuasion. Okay, which persuasion would that be? Di diplomacy. Uh, yes. yes, diplomacy. That's a seven. <laughs> this is coming from a goblin, after all. 
Um, she's going to kind of smile a bit and say, hmm, thanks. Um, would the face like to attempt to uh, persuade her? Yeah, what are we trying to persuade? I've been singing to myself, covering my ears while I refocus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, didn't didn't want to upset you with some of the conversation, but uh, we we could help her out, or she could help us out. Uh, I take a look at her. What do I notice about her? Is there anything that gives me insight into how to persuade this woman? Um, you're a paladin, right? Do you I have like any? Do you have? Did you use any any ability recently to detect evil or? Uh, no, I'm I'm not that kind of paladin. Uh, okay, gotcha. There isn't really a paladin in Pathfinder. It's a champion arc. Gotcha, gotcha. I am a paladin subclass of the champion, but detecting evil isn't what I do. Although gotcha. I do smite it. She looks. She looks very pale, um, and a little bit of like dark, wrinkly skin. She carries she's like very idiot. like black cloak. Like she's definitely she's definitely odd. Yeah. I got like, it. if you didn't know about her, you'd think she's like a walking corpse. You got no evidence of that. Yeah, I, I've seen the type before. She doesn't go out in the sun, doesn't have a lot of friends. Hey, lady, listen. I know we can all be pretty lonely sometimes, but yeah. there's nothing in this world for each other unless we help each other. So you should come with us. We can help you. You can help us. We can make this work. Diplomacy with advantage. <laughs> all right. I, I love Diplomacy. Her. She actually is very lonely. <laughs> You know, due to the whole dad shtick. Yeah, oddly enough, uh, a goblin who has been <laughs> stomped on his entire life is very inclusive of people. With advantage, that's a nine. Well, a ten with a song, right? At least it's not. Yeah, an ten hour, with the song. Um, she's going to say, thank you for your kind words. I can't accompany you, but perhaps you could use this. And she's going to pull out a small or late, ornately, um, an or, an, a small ornately scribed scroll. I take it and I open it up. What does it say? Scroll of, it's a scroll of restorations. Ooh. I tuck it in my armor and I say, I'll never forget you, Renee. <laughs> it's, uh, Jathel? Jathel, I'm sorry. But now I'll never forget you. <laughs> so. What now, dudes? Uh, now we go save the sword lord kill some bad guys do what we do west all right yep east west um you, by the way strix yes. um yes when the you notice that like something fell out of the frog's mouth during the during okay. the during the uh during the commotion. I I will pick it up. It is appears to be a talisman. It's long it's a long, hollow proboscis harvested from a notorious blood sucker beast and drips a trickle of blood. Hmm. It is a blood seeker beak talisman. Ooh. Okay, I will attach it to my gun as a bayonet. <laughs> nice. It actually has an interesting effect. When you activate the beak, you deal an extra 1d4 persistent damage on your damage roll. Deal sneak attack damage to the creature. You also deal an additional 1d4 persistent bleed damage. Nice. Now, this only happens when you attack a flat-footed creature with the affixed weapon. Right, so I have to attack them from stealth. Or if they're otherwise flat-footed, yeah. Uh, yeah. But considering my modus operandi, 
probably this will only activate when I can use one shot, one kill. Yeah, more damage during that wouldn't be a terrible, terrible thing necessarily. Right? No, it absolutely would not. All right. A large recessed area sits in the floor of this enormous chamber. Rocks, racks retaining practice blades and stands holding suits of padded armor line the north and south walls. Um, bodies litter the floor. Eight of the eight guards lay dead among cloaked corpses of eleven uh, cutthroats and two dead ogres. You see uh, Lady Jamandi facing off against a pair of frost giants. In the open area to the northwest of the dueling pit. At the same time, um, uh, at the opposite end of the hall, a um, total of five bandits in black armor burst through the door and immediately move to your direction. Let me go ahead and place the... Uh, Okay. Um, she yells, just in time, that's her leader. Take her out while I deal with these oaths. And um, as you guys enter, I want everyone to roll me a perception check and then initiative. Perception check, then initiative? Correct. Okay. I rolled the same thing for both. Five 22 for perception. Five and seven. Which is just different odd dice. And. Nineteen perception, twenty one. I better put it in the chat. Twenty five for <laughs> initiative. Nice. Um, Strix, you notice these Ooh. two frost giants look extremely similar to the one you met elsewhere. Ah. They're, they're most likely related. Didn't, uh, my memory is having a little bit of issue. Didn't the brother, the brother tell us to tell his brothers something, the giant? Oh, that sounds really familiar. I cannot remember what that was, though. Yeah, I can't remember the exact wording, but it was something about uh, we're done. We've made a deal, and they're done fighting. Does this ring I should have wrote it down verbatim instead of just making a short note. Do you know the other Frost Giant's name? Did we ever get his name? Can we do a recall knowledge check? <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll a recall knowledge check. I'll get it to you. Thank you. Oh, got 19 plus uh, three intelligence because I think it's just a general check. Ear render. Ear render? Jur grinder. Jur grinder. Jur grinder. Jur grinder said that we can stop that uh, to stop fighting now or something like that or whatever. He said, also. They stop, look at you, and says, Why would he say that? Because you're on our side. Because we promised now. him a better deal. Well, I mean, you know, 
kind of deal. Literally, I mean, she's already right here. You just kill her and then we're done. Yeah, well, see, the thing is, we're part of the the expanse to make a kingdom, and we figured you guys would be happy with actual gainful employment, and who would stand against a kingdom that has three frost giants as guards, right? One looks, the other one asks, how much are you paying? It's negotiable. Three cows. I think it's what we said earlier. Yep, a cow each, yeah. Three cows. And one says, three cows? Wait, that's a cow each? And the other guy says, no, 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 no. We need gold, not cows, you idiot. And he smacks him back the head. No, no, uh, Lady we'll, Jemaidi we'll is currently, too. like, she's, so she'll, she looks like she's ready to, like, strike. And then she's like, uh, what? So, it, three pet cows, one for each of you, and the gold. One says, my weight in gold. I mean, we might have to raid a couple other places to do that, but sure. Over the time of the contract. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of them pulls out a parchment, and they roll it down all the way down, and it kind of rolls and stops right at your feet, and it has a line with a big red X. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to pull a surprise and actually read the contract. <laughs> it dictates that you owe the three pet cows, of which uh, one whose name has to be named Daisy. Uh, numerous sort of stipulations, such as no hunting frost giants of any of any kind, unless they are either aggressors, um, no persecution against giant kind, and um, free reign and housing for all giant kind who decide to make your kingdom their home and decide to live lawfully, as well as um, a small stipend for said people who decide to assist your kingdom in any way. I'm actually fine with those terms. That sounds perfectly reasonable. Yep, I will sign it. <laughs> All right. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, the cutthroats are looking up and they're like, uh, "What just happened, boss?" Roll initiative. Initiative is now counted. Okay, the frost giants are on your side. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's Strix, Ignatus, Aurelia, and then the Giants, and then the Memories. See, th th this is why I named my character close to Stitch, because he is very persuasive for a little guy. Um, all right, Strix, what do you do? Jermani still looks like she's, like, kind of debating on attacking them. I, I look at her. Don't fight the giants, fight the bandits, and I'm going to shoot one of the men in black. Because fuck them. <laughs> Roll the hit. Ah, that is a 15. Uh... I don't believe that hits. Okay. Uh, reload. And oh, it does. Fire. It does. Oh, it does 16. hit. Okay, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Roll, roll damage. Okay. Uh, that is four points of damage. Okay. And I'm still going to shoot him again after I reload for the... So... Second, reload, third, fire again. All right, roll it. Uh, it's being slow. Map minus five, and that's a 19. Um, that will definitely hit. Roll damage. Uh, three points. Um, you do two concentrated shots into the into the dude's chest, and he falls. Yep, seven total, and yeah, that's that's my three actions. Ribbit. Yep, froggy boy. Um, 
you know what? Body slamming. Uh, A.K.A. melee attack. <laughs> He's going to have to take a couple actions to get there. Yeah, that's fine. He's going to do uh, one large leap. What's his bonus? Uh, plus eight for his jaws. Okay, so that is um, 13 to hit. That is not hit. Uh, one of the members manages to use his impromptu shield to kind of block the uh, the frog and says, What the fuck is this thing? Oh, yeah, speed 25 feet, swim 25 feet, and it has a large strength pull, so has a massive jump, if it decides to jump, with its plus 10 to high jump or long jump. Gotcha, okay. But it is a creature, so only has one action at a time. All right. Um, so next is our paladin friend, our champion. How do you get that ruler? Uh, click, press. hit M, M. Or just click in the bottom right hand corner. Yeah, and there's different ones you can grab. No, that's not what I want. How do you get the ruler when you're moving your token? Uh, I forget. Oh. Yeah, I forget how to do that. I, I think okay, that's a setting, not a. Uh... Yeah, okay, no, no, okay. Click in, click the M, and then you see the person. Click that. Now make it so when you move your character, move your token, it'll show the distance. Sweet. So that's going to be like about roughly sixty feet. Nope, I go in there. Okay. Where's my token? I just, Where's I just moved your. Where did you want to be? Yeah. Sorry. I'll let you move it. Uh, yeah. No worries. Still not measuring, but I'll count. So okay, okay. So at 20, the bottom left of your screen, 30. you see you see where the little, where it says toggle rulers. Bottom left. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, bottom, bottom, right. Right, bottom right. Bottom right. Bottom right. Put the little uh, dot and where it says toggle rulers. Nice. And then yes, and then you now. see where it says one, two, three, four, and then click where it's the little, little person icon. And click two. Person. You want to click two and the person icon. Two and the person. Okay, that's why. Oh, is that how it is? Yep. No, mine. So now it won't let me grab the person. Oh yeah, that. Well, it won't let me. Yeah, no, no. Let All you need to do is make sure that person's highlighted. Let's try that. And again. then when you grab them, it should, it should, it should do it. Still can't but, grab the person. Right, right click. Yeah, right I... click. Oh, right click. Or escape. There you go. Now try to do it. There you go. There it is. Okay. So, it's two actions to get here. Okay. Does Jamondi look hurt? No, she's perfectly healthy. All right. Then I just turn and face the horde. And I'm going to demoralize uh, whoever's still on their feet. This guy with the bow right here. Okay. So, I shout at him and I say, leave with your life while you still can. Four, ten. It makes a persuasive argument. Shut up, minion. Okay. Minion? They call, they call them minions. Oh, I thought he called me minion. About to use a fourth action. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's my turn. What you got, Aurelia? Oh, it's my turn? You yep. got it. All right. So I'm not going to be doing a ton this turn. Uh, I need to be able to move, though, if you can uh, change the order. Yep. There you go. All right. Let's uh, get in here and go 30 feet towards them. Uh, there we go. Uh, that's one action. Two, second action is going to be to cast the shield spell. 
uh, to up my armor class and give me some uh, hardness. So I think I take reduced damage if I get hit. Um, and then I'm going to go hit, go into Ar Augment Cascade off that, which uh, basically ups my damage, and I get 1 temp HP per round, which is pretty nice. So basically just getting my defenses ready. And getting a little closer. Red alert mode activated. Basically. The giants look at each other and say, Friend! pull up their stat blocks. It's all over the fucking book. You aren't supposed to befriend them, but you sure shit did. <laughs> um Okay. So they're both going to use chill breath. So that's four D six of damage. Holy shit, I rolled almost max. Dang. Um, all the small ones are fucking dead. And they all... And the big one... Uh, failed their saves. Yeah, well, it didn't matter because they, they took enough damage just to die. Oh, even with half damage, what you're saying? Got it. No, no, there is no save for half damage. It's, it's if you fail, fail your save, you become immobilized. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that one's kind of brutal in this one. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's they don't they don't fuck around, dude. This is why I figured it'd be better to befriend them than to fight them. You know, it's better than a tough enemy. A tough enemy is fighting your enemies for you. Exactly. Uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Uh, he they she makes the reflex save, so she doesn't get frozen. She just takes a fuckload of damage. All right. This says it's basic. Oh, but yeah, basic would mean that you don't take any damage if you succeed it. A success says take half. So here's basic. Not according General. to the stat blog I just read. Is this? Are yeah, you reading uh, from a? I'm reading from a stat block. One... It's an ability called Chill Breath. I'm reading from a stat well, it's block. Probably, it's, it, it might be a different ability than if it's from the. Giant. Is this from the first edition? No, second edition. No. All right. Yeah. All right. Um. It doesn't say basic reflex save. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. All right, that's that's fine. I'm just surprised. Hey, it's fine. They they took care of the problem for us. We're good. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get our movement. That is going to have to be two actions. Let's get one action to attack. Fuck. For also three. Okay. Alright. She's going to attack Jumanji. That's going to hit. There it is. For 13 damage. Oh no, the ability, the willing of red X adjacent to enemy. 
dealing additional 8 points of damage and 17 required to take the blame and not prone. She fails. She's not prone. And she's at like half health. Bandits are dead. Alright, Strix. Uh, there's still bandits standing? Uh, just the main one. Yep. Uh, reload, then fire at him. Hold it. Uh, fuck, that's an 11. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm going to do? Since I can't reload and fire again, I'm going to toss it down and fire my, cro my hand crossbow. <laughs> Roll it. This is the map shot. What the... Oh my god. No ammunition is a sign. Yes, it is. Ah, uh, that's a twenty one to hit. That hits. Uh, that is four points of damage. Okay. All right, Froggy. All right. Uh, yeah, Froggy's going to bite a bitch. D20 plus eight. Fails. All right, Mr. Champion. Is anybody left living? I can't see. Get there. Uh, one there is the 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 big the 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 boss essentially. Let's see. So there's thirty feet. That's 45 feet. Good thing I'm fleet. Oh, that'd be 40 feet to get to there. Even better. And I'll attack. Roll it. Nope. That's 10. Uh, they deathly dodge. <laughs> they look at you and say minion mm. are you you're sure you're a barbarian if you're still alive in like I don't know 24 seconds you're totally dead <laughs> <laughs> very specifically being very patient All right, I really uh. Alrighty, so let's see. I don't know if I. I don't think I can get to it. I can. Oh yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, we're gonna move and go for a classic spell strike. Let's see if we get a hit here. Oh my god, we keep rolling the dice off the table. Um, that is not gonna hit. That is a uh, two plus eight is ten plus one from the thing. Oh, Eleven. They batted away with the with the tip of their axe, almost almost like looking sad for you. <laughs> well, that's the end of my turn. Oh wait, oh yeah, that, that that's more damage. I don't think it's more to hit. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's it. All right, that's all I got. All right, the first oh, ones are gonna right. are gonna swing. Fuck, they both miss. She's gonna swing. Damn! I'm rolling shit today. Swing and a miss. Yeah. Same. 
All right. Um. So she's going to do an overhand smash on Aurelia here. She rolls a 22 to hit. Uh, that's going to hit. Not crit. All right. Uh, so she does... 14 plus 8. That's going to be 22 points of damage. You must succeed in a DC 17 42 save to avoid being not thrown. Sorry, how many points of damage? That is 14 plus 8, so that's 22. Okay, well, I'm unconscious. Guess a lot. And it was a All right, Strix, she just save? bitch slapped it really. Uh, well, I got a 25 on the fortitude save, if that matters. Uh, you're I, unconscious. I don't think it does if you're unconscious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can do nothing this round but pick up my rifle and reload. <laughs> You're like, shit, 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 shit. Yep. All right, Froggy. So, yeah, that's my round. Okay, Froggy's going to bite again. Roll to 13. What's the bonus? Uh, Plus 8. That's going to hit. All right, it's a D6 plus 3 for piercing damage. Plus I rolled, I rolled a 6. That's 9 piercing. That's good. Okay. Uh, so he is also gra grabbed, which means they are grappled. Okay. He's grappled, huh? Yep. Uh, they, they <laughs> that sounds like magical words to the fucking champion. Yup. <laughs> Alright, champion. Alright, if I'm gonna hit him, now's the time. I got another plus two. Thirteen. Alright, one more time. No shit. I can't swing at him again. I swing and I miss. And I'm going to do an athletic maneuver to leap over the frog. Okay. You I, leap do you frog. Want to roll for that? I mean. And I'm going to lay on hands. Aurelia. Revive Aurelia. Your eyes blink open. Oh, nice. And I have five health? Uh, yeah, I th think it is five. Okay. Let me see. I don't think there's negative in this game. That's not my... Um, looking at the rolls, the only negatives are, are you take wounds if you take damage while you're down. And if you take so many wounds, you're just insta-dead. Ah, okay. So, I took a one wound for going down? Yeah. Got it. Uh, six hit points. I'm sorry. Six. six? Okay. Cool. I, got I think that might points. have something to do with my bonuses. Sounds good. Um, taking any magical or non-magical healing... That puts you up so far removes your wounds. So far, but not no, bad. you're still wounded condition one. Yep. Yeah. If you'll have to be healed again to remove the wounds. Got so, it. Got it. Oh, I yeah. and I found out how to add wounds. All right, we're good. Yeah. I don't think it's if I'm correct. I don't think it's just healing armor. It's wounded. I don't uh, know. It, has to be like it a might just be magical. It might be. Let me check. Treat wounds will remove the wounded condition after the individual is up. Well, that would be a wounds. separate treat wounds. It has wounds. to be treat wounds. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah, it has to be treat, treat wounds, wounds and not from dead. It's treat wounds after they're healed. Or magical healing. Really? Oh, I didn't think so. <laughs> yep. No, the wounded condition is not removed just from magical healing. The wounded oh, condition really? ends if someone uh, successfully restores hit points to you with treat wounds. Okay, or if you yep, are restored to go. full hit points and rest for 10 minutes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I had multiple tabs of the rolls, and it's like, okay, that one's wrong. <laughs> okay. 
or it's for the first one. All right. Yeah. I really have. Okay. There's another little dent in your forehead. Aurelia stands up for one action. Um, uh, and does... Um, I'm trying to remember if I have... Uh, I don't think it gets to the first level. Double checking, though. Um, oh, I do. I'm going to use my conflict spell, Thunderous Strike. Uh, which is, uh, Thunderous, I wish I could find it, let me look it up. Uh, you swing your massive weapon, um, make a melee strike with your two-handed weapon, each creature in a 15-foot cone, you must take a basic fortitude save against your spell DC, and take, or two, or take two sonic damage. On critical failure, they're knocked prone. This also gives me my spell strike back. Yeah, basically like that. All right. So um, they have to make a save. Yeah, fortitude. Okay, they're pretty good at fortitude. That's a unnatural twenty. Unnatural twenty. Oof. Alrighty. Um. Then I think that's just a success. Uh. So the d no damage taken or anything. Um. Well, then I and then I'm gonna make a um, uh, an attack roll. Uh. At my full map because that doesn't actually that last thing didn't count as an attack, like a normal attack. Uh. That is a seventeen plus. Uh, eight is twenty-five to hit. Oh, plus twenty-six to hit. Uh, with the bonus plus one. Plus twenty-six. With twenty-six total. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That will definitely hit. No crit. Nope. Dink. All right. Roll of damage. It's not gonna be as much as I normally do, but it's gonna be something. Uh, that's three plus four, seven. Seven damage. How much damage? Seven. Okay. You're still up. Oh, no, that's the end of my turn. That's my last action. I'm sorry? That's my third action. Okay. Yeah, you're still up. Oh, she's still up, is what you're saying. Yes. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm done my turn. Bop, bop. Marking on it. Let's go, like, way up to get the, the stat block for these guys. And they are it's still grabbed, by the way. Okay. In that case, they both hit. Um, it's going to be 1d8. Plus 8. Because you can't disengage from a grab until it's your turn. Okay. So, um, they basically just jump on her and just bash her head into the fucking concrete. Taking turns. She's dead. She starts to move a little bit, and they keep doing it. Dang. Okay, we got her. Good job. All right, that's the battle. Good stuff. All right, well, the battle's won. There's, uh... Uh, Jamandi said anything to us about it? Let me help you up, my lady. Ah, well, uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Um. So, hold on one second. Let me make sure I'm in the right section.
All right, let me go over this one more time. Oh, you want to speak to the Frost Giants real quick? Well, before okay. we, we change things, I just didn't want to jump oh. in. Uh, before we're changing the talking yeah. to Jimondi. Yeah, it sounds good. I was wondering if it was before that. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, so she's going to thank you for all of your help, and then um, her and the rest of the guards are going to work on putting out the fires that were started in the end or started in the uh, manor. Hey. Um, Jorgendil's brothers. What are your names? Actually, hold on. I have it here. Good question. Thorovolf and Ragnar. Thorovolf and, and Ragnar. Now that you're under contract with uh, Jamandi. You know, wait, 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 I, with us I, specifically. They're under contract with us. Oh. Wonderful. Now that you're under contract with us, the, uh, I don't know who we are, but now that you're under contract with us, what do you say, uh, a little help putting out these fires with some of your incredible frost powers? Not in the contract, but okay. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, that's all I had. Good call. Yep. So, uh, we were woken up in the middle of the night. Eh, we should probably go back to bed now, huh? Yeah, Once we've secured the manor, like... I'll be wanting yeah. to speak with all the remaining heroes and uh, seeing them off to the stolen lands upon the morrow. Uh, of course. Hey, it's like six in the morning now, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Alright, let's clean up. Yep. I'm surprised none of you have tried to loot the body yet. Oh, yeah, actually, good point. Yeah. I really would definitely pick through the body. Yeah, let, let's loot. <laughs> Yeah, specifically because it's not an ethical to loot a dude to try to kill you, right? Yeah, no, no, exactly. no, very not a non, non, very ethical to do so, actually. <laughs> it's a complex moral gray area. It, spoils of war. It, it's allowed. It keeps troop morale high, so it has to be good. Especially. If oh, okay. It keeps morale. troop morale high. It has to be good. <laughs> I mean, okay. we're mercenaries. We're not soldiers. You guys are getting paid? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> we get paid in spoils of war. Uh, the, the the person has a chainmail, a plus one great axe, um, four healing potions that didn't get a chance to use, a jade and pearl necklace, a silver ring worth 30 GP, and trackers goggles. Okay, I'm interested in the trackers goggles. <laughs> 30 GP, you said? The ring worth 30 gold. Oh, we're, are we okay with converting that straight to gold, or do you want to no. Yeah, fine. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Aurelia will hold on to the ring. She She's not opposed to sharing, though, in general. Um... Uh, ring worth 30 pieces. So, I'm assuming the tracker and tracker's goggles are not a custom thing, correct? Um, so she's going to, uh, begin to issue orders to all the guards as the frost giants go and start printing out the fire. She says, take what you want from the bodies. Whatever you leave, we'll put to good use. 
Okay, yeah, I'm I, I am taking the tracker's goggles, if you don't mind. They give a plus one to survival. Nice, yeah. This and good. for tracking. I'm already swinging a two-handed weapon. I might as well give a great axe a try. Great weapon. Uh, was there any other magical weapons, or just other weapons in general? Those are it. Um, okay. She notices that you are currently wielding weapons that was in her treasury. We, we uh, use these for the defense. Although we did manage to stop Tortuccio, who was running away with uh, the uh, more the valuables. She and she pro provides the bag of uh, stolen goods from Tortuccio. Yep, we weren't trying to steal or nothing. We were just working on defense, and we had had to. Do some upgrades to not die. I'd like uh, to point yeah. out that I wasn't wielding it uh, hanging from my belt. and uh, I, just, I was, I was wielding the longsword. Very well. I will allow you to keep the magical weapons in exchange for your services. Tell me, um, is there still a... my Is there still my backup treasury down there? Uh, it should still did... be there. Yeah, the only thing we took out of there was, what, the healing potions? Oh, yeah, good, good. So so I can be rest assured that you relock this, the, relock the chest and close the door. Yes. Yeah, and I'll hand her the you, key. You specifically didn't do that, by the way. I, we didn't, but... <laughs> uh, okay, good. That puts my mind at ease. I would hate for strangers to go, to go discovering a pile of treasure. Um, did... We do that. <laughs> I'm still handing her the key. Like, did we do that? <laughs> Always good to double check these things. Yeah, I mean, we were in the middle of a fight. Proceeds to make up an excuse to go check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotta go check for bandits. <laughs> we just kill all the bandits on the way here, though, I feel like. So should be good, but we'll see. Well, she doesn't know that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, hey, so, um, I, about the frog. Oh, yes. It's one of my guardian creatures. Surely you noticed I, there, it, there it were makes, no bodies in that room. Yeah, it makes a really nice, uh, really nice mount. Ah, I see. I'm surprised you didn't choose the owlbear. Say what now? Oh, no worries. The enchantment only works on one thing at a time. But no, no, you went robot. I didn't hear what no, you said. No, uh, she said, I'm surprised you didn't choose the owlbear. I did not know that worked, because he was blinking at me when I came in. It's funny. It's funnier if it's a toad, though, I feel like. so. Let's keep it it kind of is, especially since he's got, like, a 60-foot jump. <laughs> Pretty handy. Uh, I mean, I suppose, and well, it looks like it's already bonded to you. I suppose it could give you its control rod in exchange for you giving up your monetary reward. I'm not worried about money. I probably, mean, I'd I'd actually be cool happy with, with junk. Uh, yeah, so I've heard that about, um, your, your people. Uh, I mean, yeah. It, uh, a lot of people don't realize how valuable junk really is. I mean, do you know what I could do with some pewter cups that have been be beaten, bashed, and thrown away? I can melt those suckers down, and then I'll have, like, what, 60 bullets? Well, um, you may rock resistant them for my quartermaster. Sounds good. If he is alive. Uh, he was married, and he had a very nice ring on. We'll worry about that later. We, we've got to still do cleanup. Uh, Nibbler looks down at the ring inside his pocket. Yep. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, by the way, um, Aurelia, please make me a uh, perception check. Okay. As you hand it over the bag. Uh, that's uh, 12. Um, Nibbler had stolen some off the top. Had nabbed some off the top? Yep. <sighs> she, roll she rolls her eyes, but doesn't pursue the matter further. <laughs> you, 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 specifically, you specifically notice a golden candlestick is missing. <laughs> Aurelia's going to assume he has some reason for taking such a specific item. Because he likes to take things? <laughs> well, he doesn't know that fully yet. <laughs> Just you to assume the best. All right, so it takes about a couple hours, but the situation um, of the of the manor is under control. Um, anything that you guys uh, haven't looted at this point, she's going to requisition into her treasury and you know and to refit her guards. Um, pretty much all of the dead bodies have been cleared out. The, a big pyre is being built outside as all the victims are being, um, are going to be burned. Um, instead of like, you know, a mass grave esque of genocide. <laughs> um, engineers, uh, from Restov have recently arrived and are beginning to survey the damaged parts of the manor, uh, that were, that were cut up by fire and, and, and other equipment in order to plan repairs. Um, the funeral services are planned for later in the evening after the uh, the endowment ceremony, and servants are busy throughout the manor in the hustle and bustle, making minor repairs, cleaning up blood stains, um, and some of them are just like straight straight up trying to recover. And of those recovering are um, all of the here are all of the adventurers like Amiri, Amari, um, and God, what's her fucking face? The the halfling um, are all trying to recover from, from their ordeal. Um, Haram, Lindsay, Tortu uh, um, Tartuccio is is somehow in the mix. Uh, he looks at you with with a kind of a guilty grin, and uh, Jathal what? as well. When you say recover, are these emotional wounds or physical wounds? Um, there are some. There, there are some. Uh, like for example, Amiri, Haram, uh, and Valerie are all beaten to hell, but they're like, you know, they're they're slowly recovering. They've got some. They've got every some ten minutes. Bruises. Every ten minutes, I'm gonna lay on hands. Okay. Just How does that? Around, is, is it like a hand limited on pool shoulder. or? It is a limited pool. I get a D6. I can refocus. I have one focus point. You refocus every 10 minutes. Gotcha. Okay, cool. It takes 10 minutes to refocus. You don't refocus automatically. You have to take 10 minutes and do yeah. something light, you know. So I think I would probably be praying to the goddess of whatever the hell I pray to. My, my thunder strike is similar. That Yeah. These are, these are like spells for kind of like that you can uh, use once per fight, basically, is the idea. Yeah. yeah. You get more focus points as you go sometimes. You can get two and up to three even. All right. You have been rewarded loyalty for Miri, Haram, and Valerie. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Plus two for saving them and plus two for aiding them further. Nice. Yeah, I don't need to refit any spells, but I have been using my gun constantly, so I am going to break it down and break out the cleaning kit and start cleaning it. Um, the Great Hall has more or less been put back together. Um, you know, there are some obvious blood stains that are still around. Um, at this point, we don't really need Tailspire. Uh, probably for a bit, we'll just be role-playing this out for a little while, and we'll probably call it. Um, um, so here's a little bit of a, uh, of a read for you guys. Um. It's shocking how quickly Lady Jamandi's staff have restored the manor's great hall in the space of a few morning hours. Very few signs of the violence of the night before remain, and things have mostly returned to normal. As the adventurers who survived the assault take seats at the tables, other adventurers who arrived just today settle in as well. 
Even with these newcomers, though, there are far fewer heroes in the hall than were the previous evening, and the atmosphere is serious and somber as Lady Jemani steps up to speak. I would like to think all of you helped defeat the Black the black Clove of the Bandits last night, she begins. It's obvious someone doesn't like our plans to settle the Stolen Lands. Well, we're not so easily dissuaded, are we? I say no, and this morning I would like to issue formal charters for all of you to begin exploring the Stolen Lands and make them safer for tomorrow's settlers. The first charter we would like to bequeath goes to the group called the Iron Race, she states, and with the wave towards the band of four well-armed adventurers. Uh, the tales of your adventures have thrilled many Brevik nobles, and I'm excited to see what you can do with the exploration of the Glenbin Uplands. Your charter is to establish a base for Brevoy there, after dealing with the Tiger Lords and an open diplomatic relations with Pitax from a point of strength. Um, the Iron Race make their way up to Jumani, and she gives them their charters. As they leave the room, um, they appear to be, they, they look at you guys, like, you, you know, how harried and, 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 and wounded you guys are, and kind of just, like, saunter off while kind of storing a little bit at your misfortune. Um, and one of them, uh, in his bright and shining armor says, hey, uh, heroes, don't forget to bring your stuffed animals with you so you don't get scared. Um, as they begin to leave the, uh, the building in the meeting. Uh, she shakes her head. Um, kind of frustrated, uh, because, you know, to be honest, like, she knows how much work you guys did, um, but she doesn't really say anything. Um, Baron Hannah Strelov, as per our previous discussions, your charter is one of specific importance of Brevoy, uh, securing the southern trade routes along the eastern Selen River and establishing a base for merchant caravans and bridges alike is of utmost importance. Hook tone slow, it will be your base of operations. A dour-looking nobleman takes a charter from her with a crisp bow that's barely more than a nod, and then walks in the room. You notice a slight sneer in his face that makes for the effort with nary a word or a look to anyone else. Um, she turns to you, uh, to one of your like table mates that was uh, from the previous evening. Megar Varn, your father Androth has long been a faithful friend. Your charter assigns you to the Nolman Heights to establish a town with the Varling Post. In time, we hope to establish an Aldori dueling school there, but in the more immediate future, we ask you to broker an alliance with the Nomen Centaurs who roam the region. I trust you and your fellows are up to the task. Um, he walks up to accept this charter. As he leaves the Great Hall, he passes by your table and smiles. Once we've been established, we would love to have you come visit to set up trade relations. Good luck. And with a swish of his cape, he turns and leaves. And at last, but certainly not least, last night's heroes. First, I want to thank you again for risking your lives to help defend in my manner. The courage, gumption, and skill you displayed will take you far, I suspect. For your charters, we're asking you to travel to the southwest into the region known as the Greenbelt, a swath of wildlands that includes a forest known as the Nall Marches and the hill country of the Camlands. You've heard that the bandits have grown particularly aggressive in the Greenbelt, and they need to be stopped before anyone safely settles in the region. A small trading post in the Rossland hinterlands has been particularly hit hard. I suggest starting there. Once the bandits have been dealt with, we will be ready to bequeath you more permanent charters to settle land and establish a government of your own. And she hands you, uh, essentially what amounts to this document. Oh. Do we each get a copy, or is it one for it's, all it's of us? It's like one for it's like one for you, all of you. On the back, it has like the the the, the named parties essentially. Mm -hmm. Is it is it like laminated? Yeah, it's 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 laminated somehow. All right. Not so easily, not so e easily blemished. Um, the fresher in the corner are currently drinking meat. Um, oh, she's going to ask, uh, do you mind if I borrow your contracted, uh, giants for a task? I don't particularly mind. They're technically not under contract and will, until we've set up a kingdom. Good. I'll be sure to send them along as soon as we get the, the green belt under control. In the meantime, I have a few ideas that they can, uh, that they can help us out with. Uh... At this point, they are contracted mercenaries, so kind of treat them as such. 
Okay, sure. I wasn't going to use him as official diplomat, but... Well, uh, he kind of sidles up to her and like, I, it means they're going to ask for money for anything you ask them to do. Mm, I suppose. Um, she snaps her fingers and two, uh, two, like, kind of small halfling, um, servants come out with a chest that's kind of too heavy for them. And they kind of bring it in front of the three frost giants and they open it. It's a chest full of gold. They look at her and nod. Very graciously. Repeatedly. Um, your monitor, uh, sees, uh, Strix, sees you talking with her and wants to, uh, like, kind of, like, motions you guys to come talk to him. Yep. Let's go talk to him. Yeah, let's go talk to him. Uh, we're still getting daisies, right? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. Just wanted the, to make sure. She just, uh, so what it is, she's hiring you guys temporarily to give you proper work until we set up our kingdom because it's going to take time. Okay. He looks at his uh, his hand. It's still kind of like really bruised up. I think the mute helps. It it really does. It dulls the pain. Yeah, and I always have a lot of pain, he says while drinking uh, from a rum barrel. I'm going to go up to him and what the hell? Lay on hands. He gives you a big hug. Roll a 40 minute save. <coughs> Friend. I'm glad I didn't kill you. Yeah, we're glad you didn't either. You guys are a really big help. They look at each other. They kind of like put a hand like above, slightly above their head. Big help. Yes. <laughs> he leans in close and says, between you and me, kind of sad, we small for giant. Ah, nah, you guys are huge. It <laughs> says the three foot tall jo uh, goblin looking up at him. He sheds a slightly frozen tear. Tell you what, once we get our own kingdom, I will make you guys something that'll make the other giants jealous. They look at each other. They kind of do the motion, kind of like a shooting a gun. Big boom? Yeah. <laughs> uh, good, good. They nod with each other. Our giants are going to be outfitted with grenade launchers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, Lady Jamani encourages you guys to leave for the sort to the the stolen lands at once as soon as you're available. All right. I think yeah, we're ready I'm to go. To head out. Riding my frog that is jumping sixty feet at a time. <laughs> um, would anyone like to roll me society or uh, Brevoy lore checks? Uh, I can roll a society check. I don't have a... Because I assume you'd want to know more about the various, uh, I guess you could say, competition groups you have. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, um, I, I only have goblin lore. Let's see. I got uh, society 24. All right, cool. Um... So here's what you know about Hanistrella. The East Stalin River runs through the swamps and it's a hooked ton slough. As the most vital trade route from the south, this area is initially the most important to Bravoy. As a result, a large group of diplomats and high ranking soldiers led by the Baron is sent to this area to ensure the trade route is open and safe. Um, the Iron Race are a relatively experienced band of four adventurers who all wear heavy armor that includes full helms. Uh, they have been charged with dealing with the Tiger Lords and eventually establishing diplomatic contact with Pitex to work out the border issues. Um, 
and the Migar Varn. The Centaurs and Norman Hines have always been trouble in an attempt at diplomacy. The Sword Lords sent a group of explorers and diplomats led by one of their own. A long ranking but eager to impress Sword Lord named Migar Varn to establish a town and make a peace with the Norman Centaurs. Um, hmm. Part of their group are uh, Amiri, Harim, and Jathal. Oh, okay. So some of the other people are going uh, with the other people? Yeah. Some people we met. Um, Tartuccio has also received a uh, a charter and kind of like looks at you guys and sneers and says, I'll have my own kingdom carved out before all of you are done wrestling in the dirt with the bandits and worms. Man, what happened to the amicable Tartuccio? <laughs> eh, he's kind of a dick. Yeah, apparently. Um... By the way, roll me uh perception checks. Fourteen. Um, a couple 24. of the guards are looking at your uh are looking at you really and are kind of concerned. They are looking at me? What 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 do they see? Um Lady Jemina goes over and speaks and then she gestures to you to come forward and talk to her. She comes forward. Uh, she's going to tell you, um, I see that you have something from Pitax on you. Um, she's referring to the gift that was given to you. From Tartuccio? Yep. Okay, well, I really will say, say uh, thus. Uh, bef during the feast, Tartuccio gifted this to me. Ah, he actually referred to it as, uh, something he discovered that you already had. As a result, he recommended me, quote, Toss you out in your ear. Well, I, I did catch him also thie stealing from you, if you recall last night. Yes, I suppose. Um, in the meantime, it's kind of politically difficult to take any other action. Uh, but we appreciate your honesty, and we'll keep this in mind for future relations. Uh, Aurelia nods. All right. Um, okay, so it's about time for you guys to uh, leave on your journey to head into the uh, Stolen Lands. Nice. You kind of crest a hill, and you see the road down that curves to the right, and that's uh, along that road, somewhere distant, are troubles with bandits and um, and probably much... Darker things as well. Woo! We've caught up to where we, session one was in the Yay, first time we played this. Finally. Whoop whoop. Alright, do we want to call it here or do you want to try to proceed a little bit more? Um I'm fine with either. Yeah. I'm good with either as well. What about you? Uh Still learning, still learning names, honestly. Jack. Um, Jack. Jack. How Jack. Are you? Yeah. Uh, typically, I have a pretty hard stop point at ten o'clock, but I can go a few minutes late. Oh, sounds good. Okay. Um, there are like the I'd say it's probably a good stopping point because the next areas are all about like um, when you're pulling up the map and 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 doing all of that unless you want me just to skip over a couple of things you could possibly get for a little bit of background info it's not really that important though yeah <laughs> we can call it there that's fine here, yeah yeah it's not too big of a deal so okay all right um how, what did you guys think that was fun pretty good yeah Um, by the way, uh, Jim, uh, Lady Jamandi has gifted you a, um, she has gifted you a saddle for your, uh, your frog. Ooh. I like that. Yeah, I am going to have to take some time and actually make some more rounds. 
She did give you requisition rights for Good. Cups. Yeah, I I will re requisition as much ammo as I can get off of her then. You have an additional initial stock if you spend it since you spent the time of like the downtime that you had a little bit to uh, to make additional ammo. Yep. Um, so during that downtime, um, what is it that you two were doing? Like during the time between like where everyone else was, you know, sitting down and resting. I know that uh, Jack was spending was taking time for his character to uh, to heal up some of the wounded. Um. If we have a day before we leave, I'd like to transfer the ruin to my uh, bastard sword. You do not have a day. Okay. I'd say it's probably a couple hours rather than a day. I was just thinking if we could choose to leave a little later. <laughs> You're like, because I really want the ruin to my bastard sword. Yeah. I don't know when we're going to make see another I mean, um, Do you want the Bloodseeker beak? Because it seems like this would be a little more useful for a uh, melee weapon what does it do? than a. Um, this long hollow proboscis is harvested from the notorious Bloodseeker beast and drips a trickle of blood. Uh, when you affix it to a weapon, you hit, and when when you hit an off guard creature actor after activating it, it adds one d four piercing and one d four bleed. It has to be unaware. Uh, uh basically Anything they flat -footed. have to be flat footed. Oh, flat footed. So if I can do it before they, yeah, yeah I think you're reading the one E version of that as well. Yeah. So basically, it's before they they take their first turn of initiative. Okay. Well, I um, just pulled it off of the uh, thing because I that's the only one I could find. Uh, well, I could I could slot four. I'll slot that I could slot that in. Yeah. If you're gonna send me the name of that again, so I don't forget. Yeah, it. it's the Bloodseeker Beak is what okay. it's called. Bloodseeker Beak. Right, I'll slot that in. Beak. 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 Bloodseeker Beak. Yeah. Uh. Um, but yeah, it, it's it affixed to the weapon. Well, it uh, it's a talisman. So talisman. you just you attach it to the hilt of your weapon. Is that its own item? Wait, where would that be? Yep. Yeah. Uh, it, it's under talisman. Uh, I can you can just you. search it. Yeah. Search. Uh, well, I'm 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 in path builder, so I'm trying to figure out where that would be. Oh, oh yeah. No, I don't know where that would be. This is what it has on uh, Forge. So that's what I was using because it's what it has. All right, I'll we'll try to figure that where that is, and then add it to my sword. Yep. Oh, weapon. There's a weapon attachment section. It's probably in there. Yeah. Okay. Probably. All right. No, that's like it's silencers apparently, and like the scopes. I hope <laughs> yes, you guys had. Silencers. I hope you guys had fun. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, absolutely. And what about you, Jack? Did you have a good time? I did, yeah. It was a lot of laughs. Uh, and, uh... I like your sense of humor, yeah. Jack. It was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's kind of dry. Like, your like your character's humor is like a lot more dry than your normal sense of humor. It's so like it threw me yeah, off a little bit. Like, you know, because I thought you were like... Uh, I thought like ha I thought for half a second at some points that you were like upset, and then I, was, then I was like, oh no, his character's just like being really dry. If that makes sense. Oh, no. No, I wasn't upset. Or did you think the character was upset? No, I thought you were for a second, and I realized you were just oh, being no. a character who was, like... Yeah, no, totally. ...their displeasure. Yeah, no, I, I think... Yeah, I no, I think... You're just, you're you're just varying no character is all I'm saying. <laughs> Which I like. Cool. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording. Thank you so much for listening, and have a wonderful day.